Hey, what's up, everybody? Zero for Hire. This is the Zero for Hire podcast, and I wake up and I feel a lot better. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I gave myself food poisoning um, just yesterday, two nights ago, something like that. So yesterday I was all, I was just sick all day long. Sick, tired, weak from expelling all of that food poison. And, um, yeah, so now I'm, I'm glad to have that out. And now I wake up and I'm dealing with a different sickness. Sickness of progressivism. No, let me, let me stop being overly. <laughs> I, I used to want to do things like, um, what's his name? Rush Limbaugh. You just wake up, you read the news, and you talk about what you read in the news. And there's a couple of things that I found interesting, but there's this one video in particular. Uh... So, it's a, it's, a, it's a cheerleader from the Kansas City Chiefs. Her name's uh, Stephanie Hills, and she is railing against, uh, was it Harrison Bucker, the kicker, for who gave the commencement speech last week. And we talked about it a little bit on 520 Collective. I popped in toward the end just to, just to say hi and to, you know, participate in 520 Day. But, um, look, I want to, I, I, there's two videos here, and... I am going to play one video, and then I'm going to do a little bit of commentary, and then I'm going to play the other video and continue on my commentary. Because believe it or not, she released not one, but two. And let me just play this video here, and then we'll, we'll jump into it. Common. First and foremost, until a few months ago... We were both employed by the Kansas City Chiefs. I cheered you on for six years straight. And with that, I would assume we went to the same PR training. But since all of that obviously left your brain when you went to go give that speech, I thought I'd be a good co-worker. Share my notes. Let's get started. These are big. Biggest takeaway is you now represent a billion dollar organization. You are no longer just Harrison Buckert. You are now Harrison Buckert who plays for the Kansas City Chiefs. And anything you say or do that doesn't align with that brand, scissoring just like the lesbians you hated in that video, will be grounds for turn. So, if you still need greater context because somehow you've managed to avoid what's been going on or maybe you're listening to this in the future and you're like i i think i missed that whole ordeal so i'm gonna i'm gonna break some things down for you so we can get into it so butker is a catholic and he went to a i believe was a catholic school to give an address a graduation speech commencement and everybody went nuts now the stuff that he was saying was like we shouldn't be advocating for abortion. Um, if women want to stay home and take care of their kids, that's the most important thing that they can be doing with their life, you know, contributing to society and basic Catholic stuff. Like this is, these are all like really traditional Christian ideas and values already. But one of the things that I'm noticing is that in our culture for the last 50 years, Feminism has been one of those untouchable topics, and feminism is very closely related to abortion. And so with both of those topics, you're not allowed to talk about them. There's a lot of feminist issues we have in the church, which that's not what this podcast is about. But when you directly invoke or speak about speak against feminist uh, values, you're going to get some people lashing out at you even people in the church. And so you think that you're going to be in a safe space, but you're not. You would think that you got people, you know, that you're surrounded by people who agree with you, but not necessarily. When you, when you comment against, um, <clears throat> there, it's one of those things where it, you might as well say it's a separate religion in itself. And um, in the minds of people who feel like they can hold more than one set of values, that's one of the values that gets upheld very highly. 
so the cheerleader makes her video. It goes viral. And I'm noticing there is a balance of worldviews. And in the video, the, the cheerleader says that she's Catholic as well. So she's one of those people that I'm talking about. Like she's willing to go against her Christian values in favor of this other set of values and try to carry both in her mind at the same time. Because... If you're Catholic and then you're immediately offended by traditional, very basic Catholic teaching points, then that is that means you're not Catholic. You know, like maybe you're Catholic in name only, but you're not actually a Catholic. Like you, you think you are, you're saying you are, but you you're unfamiliar with the with the teachings. That's weird. That's not that's not realistic. So all right, let's get into these notes here. Because the teams, let's, let's first let's talk about the teams. They're on the same team, so this is bad. This is bad, man. The teams get paid based on how well they perform, you know? And on the Kansas City Chiefs, you have some of the best players in the world. Okay, so the team, they're, they're so good, they're breaking records. They have some of the best players in the world, and they're getting a lot of sponsors for that. Now, if they don't get sponsors, they don't get paid. They don't get sponsors if they're not good. If they're not good, they're not going to break records. So all, the, all of the stars are lining up for these guys, so to speak. The cheerleader is mad because the, the kicker doesn't adhere to her worldview. So she would prefer that her values be elevated over his values, so much so that she's willing to expel the award-winning football player that helps pay her salary because he doesn't align with her worldviews that's where we're at this is what we say when we when we this is what we mean when we say that liberals make everything political everything is political um she's got this mindset that like he he's a representation of the chiefs he works for a billion dollar corporation as she puts it so so I guess that means that she gets to go on social media and deliver this condescending, smug message that will more than likely hinder her ability for her team to get sponsors, which also goes against her own interests. So she's doing worse than what she's accusing him of doing. See what I'm saying? Like... You can't hold both of these things in your mind at the same time. You're saying you have to act in such a way that's going to make money for the company. Well, he says what he says, and then jersey sales go through the roof. But then she's mad because he's not adhering to her worldview. So she wants to get rid of him on that basis alone. So which is it? Is it like your worldview is more important or this, the, the representation of the company? which clearly seems to be working with the company's fans. But it doesn't work for her. So she'd rather fire him, and this would be a direct challenge against uh, her ability to make money. So she would rather adhere to her values to the point of detriment than admit that what Butker is saying resonates with fans and, and maybe even admit that he might be right in some areas. Because after all, she's a Catholic, right? Okay, so to recap... Well, uh, not to recap. Um, let's go to the, the other video, play that, so we can finish we'll get our commentary. It has never been about whether or not a woman should stay home with her family. If that is the best decision for her, do you. If you want to have a career, do you. If you want to do both, pop off. Do you? My issue lies when entitled men in positions of privilege, such as Harrison Butthurt, uses a graduation speech to put a woman in her place instead of congratulating her on her accomplishments. Are you shocked at some of his public supporters? I was not, because something these people all have in common 
privilege. The harsh reality is that majority of Americans cannot support their family on a single income. Those little bundles of joys are expensive. So telling a bunch of women that that's when their life begins, well, I guess it depends if they're privileged or not, baffles me that people think that social media has like warped this speech into something it's not. If you think that, you should go watch the 20 minute long speech and I promise you, you're gonna be sweeping your jaw off the floor by the end. Why are none of his supporters talking about the part of the speech where he condemns a woman's right to her access to healthcare, such as abortion, IVF, surrogacy, and birth control, or the part where he called gay people deadly sinners and mocked their pride month? That's low. Another thing we have in common, Harrison, is we are both Catholics. And I want everyone to know that our God preaches love and not hate. Many people are asking if there's going to be any consequences for Harrison Buckard. And I can tell you now, the answer is no. Because he is a Super Bowl winning kicker. He is a privileged male athlete. And like many other privileged male athletes, he is untouchable. Female athletes do not have that luxury. We cannot speak out about controversial topics without risking our reputation and our career. Well, there you have it. Can't wait to see if my jersey sales increase. So to recap... If the team is perceived to have this internal turmoil based on politics and values, then you think it would inhibit the team's ability to make money? You think it would make it harder for people to approach them? You know, and say like, hey, we want to work with you guys because they look around the corner, they look on Twitter, they look on the internet, they see all this drama. You think that would be bad for the, for the team. But uh, rather than, like I said, to, the, rather than to admit that the team's values are a certain way, she's going to put out this video. And then, like, the weird thing in the beginning, if because you, you probably can't see it because you're listening, she puts on glasses and she puts on a blazer. And I think she did that in the other video, too. Because she's worried, like, in her mind, it's the perception, right? It's, you need to look a certain way. You need to look like a certain type of person you need to be perceived a certain way in order for your message to carry weight to it so she feels like if she dresses like an office professional then somehow the message of condescending smugness will be accepted more readily and, and, and widely by her audience but her her entire speech is like the equivalent of just reasserting her own values um and this is the other issue. This is the other point. Um, like, you have. Well, hang on. Let me go, let me go back. She's asserting her own uh, the, the perception of being a professional. There's this like, Rush used to talk about this all the time. There's this liberal perception issue where they want to be seen as doing something. They want to be seen doing something. It doesn't matter if it's an effective thing or not. It's the perception that matters. So by putting on a blazer and glasses and saying we went to the same PR class, that means that they have a special education that, you know, informs them on their behavior. But then she, this is the part that gets left out. And I see this all the time, especially on Twitter, and I think this is what makes it easy to program bots. When you assume that the person you're talking to either adheres to or respects your worldview, then you get into this lazy type of debate mechanics where you're just reasserting your own values. You're reasserting your talking points and your team's strong you know beliefs and everything as if that's a score on the board so you would say you know like if you were a real christian you would do it this way you know and christians will do it like christians will admit i get this from the bible we will reference the bible you know jesus said this the bible says this you know if Christi christianity teaches this and that 
And this is why we do it this way. And this is why we don't do it that way. We're willing to do that. Absolutely. And this is what I believe Bucker was uh, using. And this is what makes people upset because he's not just making things up. And you can't just say he's crazy. He's making things up because he's referencing his points. If you go back and look at his points and you see that he's preaching the message f uh, fairly and truthfully. Now, if you don't adhere to that worldview and you don't value that worldview and you don't respect it, then you should at least have the fortitude to say so. But most people are cowards and they don't want to do that. And so they go on this whole like implied value system. I complained about this um, when I say like there's like the really cool black guy just implies things. And everybody tries to, like, just imply things. Well, I mean, come on, man. You, you know, you just, you do the thing. It's like Kamala Harris when she was questioned about all the terrible things she said about Joe Biden. She's like, it was a debate. It was a debate. She's just implying that the value, like, that we understand the values and, and that's enough to justify or for us to stop questioning it. And this is what uh, Stephanie Hills, the, the cheerleader, is doing. She's just very smugly and condescendingly reasserting her values as if that itself is a point on the board. Liberals, they won't do this. Um, they won't assume, like they do assume that you adhere to their values, but they won't say it out loud. They won't say, well, if you were a liberal, then you would see it this way. That's why they have all these code words like, a threat to our democracy and you know and when they say our democracy they really do mean it in that in the sense of it's their democracy it's like their democrat liberal way of doing things not the objective reality that we all live in you know they're not appealing to the rules of reality they're appealing to their subjective worldview their rules of of dem democracy democracy just being majority rule and they're saying, we all think this, and you can't be us. And this is, I mean, they act it out in the sense. Like, if you don't think like the majority, then they want to expel you. And you can't be a part of that group. And that's how they maintain their democratic rule, their majority rule. By shaming and, and uh, you know, expelling anyone. That's what she's doing here. So in this conversation, what you have is the accuser preaching to the masses in order to shame the accused into silence there's no solution here it's just that she wants him expelled so she in this in this worldview in this mindset that she holds being the best player or being one of the best players or breaking records or attracting sponsors or getting a bunch of sales from the fans based on your actions outside of work is bad if it doesn't also agree with her worldview and therefore you must be expelled they would rather have a mediocre player than a fantastic player who doesn't agree with them and meanwhile as um a one commentator uh v the what the, the romanian tv guy i was watching him as well and he says that uh he noticed that this is also the same political activists that want to get rid of cheerleaders because they say that it's like objectifying women and she's a cheerleader, but she's also holding up the values that want to put her out of a job. So she wants to put the team as the reason for her attack. You know, you represent the company. It's, it's not true. What she's actually doing is she's saying, you're not being liberal enough. My liberal worldviews are offended by what you said, and you need to change your values to match my values, and we need to, to walk in the same worldview system. Otherwise, you need to be expelled. Now, in the, in the front end of her argument, on the front end of her attack, she says it's but based on the company. But if you've been keeping a score and playing the home game... She's being uh, condescending and smug, which is like the most unattractive thing a woman can be. Um, she's pretending to be smart while swearing in, in her video. So it's like, it's like what a little kid thinks smart is, what a little kid thinks professional. In her second video, she goes as far as to dress up like a professional, but then she still has this like 
teenager behavior and mannerisms, like what a little kid thinks. You know, it's like uh, on that show Rugrats, how Angelica would pretend to be an adult, but she has no idea what being an adult is. So you have this childish behavior. You have this vulgar behavior. And she's uh, trying to get rid of the best player in the face of the fact that his actions have increased sales and favor for the company that she's claiming to defend. And yet all of that goes on her as sins against the company, if you will. And that will never get acknowledged because she has the liberal talking points, which is what this is actually about. What it's really about is politics. And that's, that's what I'm getting at here. And, and in this case, when I say politics, I'm not necessarily saying like Democrat, Republican. I'm saying liberal culture versus Christian culture. That's, that's one of the biggest battles that we have raging in our culture right now is that the liberals don't like the idea of God being over the state, that our rights come from God and that eternal judgment comes from God, all authority comes from God. They don't like that. That's why they got mad at Mike uh, Johnson when he got when he did his first speech, because he said that, and that deeply, deeply offends them. And if you listen to Joyce Reed, if you listen to MSNBC, if you listen to the mainstream liberal talking heads, they will tell you that that offends them. They see our rights as coming from the government, the state. They believe in liberalism as their religion. That is the highest value in their worldview. And it's not just political, it's cultural. You have to say the things. You can't just behave a certain... I'm actually, in a lot of ways, you can behave a certain way as long as you acquiesce to the state, ultimately. If your fealty is to the state, then you can act however you want, as gross as you want. You can, you can do crimes, and there's going to be a faction of liberals that will defend you as long as you show fealty to the left. And um, that's a scary thought, man. Like, you can do everything right. You can stand on your values. You can be a pioneer. And there will be someone on your team there to tear you down saying, I am, a, I am for the Chiefs. I am a Catholic. And yet, in her both videos, in her demonstration of behavior and the things that she's doing and advocating for, she will show you, if you look close enough, that her actual fealty is to her cultural and political party of liberalism. Not to the company, not to the church, not to God, even though she claims those things verbally, because in her worldview, if you say things a certain way, then that is better than doing it. But her actions say that her fealty is to the state. Her fealty is to liberalism. And... um I don't know. I, I, I expect to see a lot of uh, football teams going that way as well. And maybe some of the more conservative, patriotic teams will remain conservative and patriotic. But maybe we'll have some of them that just want to adhere to liberal values and expel everyone else. And then we'll see how that plays out on the battlefield. That would be awesome because then you would have something of a proxy you know, we would be able to see how this civil war plays out on the football field when you get rid of your best people because they're 99% agreement with you and that 1% disagreement isn't enough. Where in, on the conservative side, you can you have a lot of opposing, not opposing, you have a lot of people who disagree with each other in different ways, but we hold to the same values. And so as long as you hold to the highest values, we're willing to work with each other. I don't It's an interesting di dichotomy. It's an interesting observation. Um, I'm going to leave it there. There's plenty more to talk about now that I'm not sick and now that I got my software working. So I will see you guys on the next one.